wise, oh. I think you hit the... Uh, GP. Oh, the game. We forgot about GP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, game playing very safe, but I think Narf could have worked as well. Uh, I think both are pretty safe into the Karma scale. The upset has actually made this roam up towards mid, and we can now see the... Ooh. Oh, Snare connects. Trying to lock down Humanoid, but he is going to be able to make it out. Sure, Flip goes right back in. Now the call is coming in, too. They're just going to delete him. That's the Nocturne level 6. Right on time. The Storm Nicole is going to take him to safety, but he's feared, and he's taken out just like that any other summer. TP. Been out TP bottom side. Shock looking to turn this back. Luna gets some plays in their favor. North Scaring ready. Gonna pull him back. He's already used the play though. Kabe needs to debate. Luna's gonna go in. He is gonna get locked up. Waiting, focusing on Kabe. He is going to be able to make it out. North Scaring will be sacrificed. Kabe should be able to get away. Looks like Upset will grab the kill in the end. Both sides. Getting punished. And it's one of those things that could come from maybe you don't play against a huge amount of Nocturne. But look, they're looking for the play There, North Scaring gonna play back. The CC is there. North Scaring still alive. However, lands the hook. Cersei now on a killing spree. Shock of over. Committed spice and just. Mowing them down, up against the reset. Rocket jumps out of safety, but Kabe says, I can follow. Gets another one. Abadog in the way down the stun. Is he going to turn to Yelena? No, this could be the double kill for Rocket. Kabe's going forward. Does he have the stolen ultimate? It looks like it was spell shielded out. The hijack has been spell shielded. Abadage has nothing. He does not have an ult to re-engage. Now pulling back. Abadage can try to do what he can, but Humanoid is on the hunt for blood. Flashes out of safety. Pulls it back. That's not what he wanted. Oh no! Cersei on a ramp. So long, <laughs> just as the Akali flashes out. Bizachachi now away. running. He's going to get the sidestep 80% slow. Bizachachi should fall here. Trick. No upset going to grab that one. The Rift Herald has been summoned on the top side. Actually kicking off once again. 2k gold lead so far for Splice. A few more tower plates. Gonna help that one grow. So Splice choosing to swap lanes. North Scarin now looking for a dive mid. Oh, that's gonna go in. That's stolen a call. Y'all can't just dash in. Dash out to safety. Where is he going to go? Not a lot of options left. Kingmaker going Damn. to make sure he gets some of that health back. Abadage living for a long time, but Splice not gonna lose a single member in the process. Robs to Abadage. He plays that about as well as chasing is very difficult because even if you have wards, it doesn't matter. All of that becomes nullified. And so trying to overextend, overcommit to that fight immediately gets dissuaded. Have been with that tower dropping. It will now extend to about 3k gold. And Shaka have opted for a full reset. He across. drops the mid tier one. Big GP ultimate comes out. Upset not going to be able to stick around for too long. Ignar, though, fishing for the flank. They are going to go forward on the support. They're going to take him out immediately, but now the Nocturne jumps right in the back on that. So much damage, but Cersei is going to be in trouble. Abadage going in. He's going to be able to grab a kill in the end. That's the shutdown. That's going to be massive. A stolen GP ult is going to start landing down some damage. Kabe is a on the hunt, looking for Abadage. Humanoid ready to go over the wall, but Abadage is certainly dead. Oda Wamne and Upset left standing, but they cannot go back in. Trick, though. You see, moving forward, moving with a lot of confidence at this point. Humanoid can leap in in a second, look for an execute. A lot of low health bars. Very strong position. 3 1 and 3 is his score line right now. His itemization is coming in on nicely, and oh, the engage goes. comes through once again. Chachi is going to get locked with the lantern. It's right there. Nocturne ultimate coming out as well, but a huge stun comes into the Kiana. Visit Chachi just barely going to be able to make it out, but now the re engage comes in. Instantly, Trick goes down. Upset has jumped down. He's reset the fight for now. So he's going to step forward. Upset is the guy you have to keep your eyes on. Has to flash away from the hook. Ignar being the front line as the team needs. Abadage, does he have the hijack up and available? Not going to be an option. Goes back in. He's going to fish for it. The Petrocyte burst. Picking up two in an instant double kill. Game. We'll find some nice shutdowns and we'll stop the push from Spice. Invedius. We talked about team engage, But they were just out of range enough to allow Upset to find engage. And now, Humanoid is just going to get picked off. That's instantly deleted. So Spice is that. Abadage and Trick fading back into Fog of War and instantly spotted out again. Even on meanwhile, people oh. now. And a TP in now with uh -oh. the top side. Uh -oh. Maybe the Marine is here. Upset over the wall. Oduwame there. Though. He's going to go back into the pit. However, a lot of damage coming down. The lockup is there from the side of Trick. But the Nocturne's now coming in. That's going to be one shot. So needs to make it out to safety. But you cannot get away from this Karma without the use of the flash. We'll be forced to make it out over the wall. Meanwhile, perfect access to the pit. But Upset is looking for the resets. Has to back off the hook. Not going to connect. Upset, this is his moment. This is his time to shine. Can he get a little bit more done with the leap back in? The Shuriken flip. Humanoid manages to take him out just oh, like Shaka have information of this. They Careful, AK getting lowered. It's bad now. The hook doesn't connect. He doesn't have a way back to the pit. Humanoid has to be careful. Ultimate for the Akali is not available yet. 6k getting lower. The Karma shielding and doing a little bit, but that's the game plan. now coming bad. in. This is bad. The damage goes in. North Scan is going to lock up the jungle. That's it. 4k health. They need to reset the pair and they need to make sure that Splice cannot get back into this pit. This is disastrous for the side of Shalka. They have stayed for way too long. But it comes to Nocturne. <laughs> Denied the kill, but it does not even matter. The Karma running for a life. But Odawami just looks useless in the fight. Two kills for Kabe. There's the dive power of Splice's comp. The Nocturne goes in, the Gangplank is there as well, and you follow it up with the Kaisa for the cleanup. Beautifully nice played. Job, that. And let's be honest, the moment North Scarin landed a hook onto Trick, he just relied on his buddy Baron to finish it, it off. Was so I mean, all right. Oh, Ooh. no. 
Baited out blocks the stun. Now trying to heal up Kingmaker. Yeah. Flash away. They are going to focus their sights. They're going to commit to this play fully. They want to desperately kill Zerse. He is going to get taken down. GA now comes up. Adage has to be careful. He's going to 1v2. He's going to walk away. Zerse does not get hit. Trick, trick messes it up. No, you can't do that. Oh, it was perfect from the side of Zerse. He's still alive. Meanwhile, on the base, Humanoid's going to die for some reason. Shut down. Goes over to Ignar. But in the meanwhile, Splice are going to break the mid lane too. I've been telling people for too long. This champ is strong! Daniel Draco's one versus two coming out from... Cool. Um, that's why DPS champions are really annoying because you can't spell shield DPS. Dive is coming through. Hold that thought. There's a siege going on. There's a replay happening at the same time. Spells with the first skill or double play by playing here. You're going on the top side. Also, things are happening on your main screen. And the small screen Nocturne's using a stolen ultimate. Rather, Silas is. Also, Splice are breaking the base. Lots of stuff happening here. Cleanse now coming out. Splice now going to leap in. Main screen has to keep your eyes on that fight because in goes Kave. That's going to be all too easy. Kave now needs to back up. Doesn't even need to. His front line is there to protect him. They're trying to get something back. Abadog, he simply cannot do it. Double kill comes in for Kave. Splice, honestly, just destroying on that bottom side siege. And now they're going to move in. They're going to make their mark on game one. 32 minutes, they're going to pick up their first win. Strong performance from Splice in game one. What is quite interesting is we're seeing a very similar pattern from Schalke. A lot of the focus seems to be going around both Upset and Amadage. We expect a lot more ganks to be continuing to happen Stop around. Making his way over. Humanoid is going to do a quick base. Oh, all in box. Kabe is going to be in trouble. The platform from Upset. There's a lot of damage. The Jinx is going to take a lot back. They do manage to take him down. The TP now coming in. Norskaren going to try to fit for the kill. The Lantern is there. Pull him back out to save you. The TP now. The play backwards is perfect from Ignar. Is going to be able to make it out. But no. Humanoid desperately fishing. Ignar is going to land the hook. Pulls him under the tower. But not the member that he wanted to hit. Humanoid goes invisible. Goes right back out. Norse Gets out with this 800 gold lead, but Splice actually gained so much off these small sequence of events that have happened. And now Shalko looking to fight, but they can't go for this. As level six can just go right back in. He's gonna finish off the sport, goes right back in for Trek. Humanoid wants another one. It looks like a double, but they are gonna get the kill of the Kabe. Now Upset is running for the hills. The Zap will not connect. They need to back off. The tongue lash is there, spits him out, and that's just gonna be it. Kabe's gonna walk him down. Running one more. The rocket. That's the double. Get excited, folks. Splice dominating Shalka. We just talked about this, Dracos. We just said that Splice is in a fantastic position. Humanoid has his ultimate, he has a level advantage, the bot lane is in a better position. Oh. Dive might come through. Cersei is very strong right now. He can't just walk under this tower. Ignar has to be careful with the hook. He does manage to connect on the Akali. That's going to be their ticket out of here. They need to get out to safety. Humanoid can go back in. North Garen is there to save the day if needed, but they're just going to walk in. It's a split fight. Humanoid going to fish for one, going to look for a second one. Upset now running for his life. Humanoid trying to chase. He's going to get it. It is not even going to cost him his life. Are you kidding me? Double kill. Going down for Humanoid, and this is a stomp. And it is three for zero in favor of Splice. They pull off another dive, and it is off the back of a great roam from Humanoid. Abadage now trying to answer on the top side of the map. Let's see what Chachi can do. Honestly, it's still dying here. If he's not able to get something back, this is going to be disastrous for the team. Now fishing, the abscond is not going to work. The abduct will not connect. Visit Chachi will go down in the end. Oh, taken out. Shaka going to get back, but it's... it's it's just, it's just nothing. It's just not enough Table to balance scraps. this out. Exactly. It's 10 minutes, and that copy's gotten all of those plates. This Jinx is going to go back. This is, this is massive. And now the question is, how quickly can they close out? They have tools to do so. Abadage, if he commits this, is going to be a very sad. There's a catfish right from the brush that isn't even needed. Goes right back in. Humero going to grab the kill. Leaves forward on a trick. Now trying to fish for a little bit more. This lantern's there. Not going to take it. TP now burned mid lane. Splice, happy to have that one, because Jinx is just taking towers. Um, and I, it's it's hard. Oh because man, are they doing the 15 plates? They go okay. Shao trying to answer. Plates. Visit Chachi. If you kill someone here, it's so bad for this team. But it looks like Visit Chachi will be taken out. They're finally able to grab a pick. He's chasing for it. One more shot. One shot. One kill. 360 no scope. No, will not happen. Visit Chachi cannot find the kill. The parlay will not connect. Ooh, Ooh, the body okay. block of the rocket coming out for me. This Kaisa, Vidius. They got their priority bot lane. And then they immediately got He's a player that doesn't get resources, and his whole role and responsibility is to survive. And his gangplank ultimates have been there to assist the likes of Humanoid of attack, because it's the only window of opportunity the Shalka can find, as oh. Splice looking to extend their lead. The damage now coming in, GP. The TP on the backside this is the last chance for Shalka. If they do not win this fight, I think the game is actually just over. Shalka might even be dead, they don't even know what upset. Now steps forward, a lot of damage on the doggy on the backside, takes the GP all can go, and can look to get this fight kicked off. But this is Chachi. Unstoppable actually takes the old humanoid. But Wamne now running. Eyes on the Akali. If they get too low, they're all just going to instantly die to this Akali ultimate. Kabe now retreating. Oh, Kabe now on a rampage. Big damage coming in this humanoid. Sure conflicted. Just pushed away from it, and while he is winning out on trades, he's not quite getting that down. Chachi now the leap in. A lot of damage going on to the GP. The TP has now been used to shock them. Overstayed their welcome. This will start to turn against them. The TP now canceled. 
We look for the side of Abadage. He's going to buy more time, but I mean, it might just cost him his life because he goes in. It does. Abadage stops the TP. He spent his life to do so. Can Chalka now win the fight instead? Pillar coming back for Trick shortly. He did as soon as he can. He's going to get it caught. They might just look to turn another AoE rocket. Aren't going to come out to play. It's exactly what they need. They might turn up, but the damage is too much. Is he going to get no? Only one kill, but still a hero performance from Kabe. Almost turns. So Splice, even though they have this massive gold lead, at the end of the day, they lose a fight. And Shalka Humanoid kind of being the wall to stop the team from getting through. Trick burning his pillar a little but bit early, gone. and that means uh, Splice just gets time in. Shalka tries to do something, Splice is matching, which I don't think they should be doing. They have the band buff, they have a huge gold lead, they should just be uh, taking advantage of the fact that four people at Shalka went top, and they should be running down mid. They should be sieging onto those towers, because what's more important is just breaking into the base rather than trying to go for a fight. I don't think I agree, Betty, but I, you know, you always have to take into account the, the pressure, the emotional factor. Yes, Splice know they're insanely far ahead. It's 11k gold lead. The Humanoid now looking for the retreat. But a single mistake and it could turn. Stolen a call, y'all might be enough. Humanoid gonna cut through. Abadage now dashing out. Upset on the hunt. Humanoid, no shroud. GP all comes in, but honestly fired a little bit short there. Chachi though continues in on the bottom side. We'll be able to break this tier two. The Jinx is on the bottom side as well. They're just gonna shred through that tower. Now they're gonna fish to get into the base. Shalka need to commit. They either need to force push and engage. This is exactly what they want to be doing. See, Shalka now have to divide their resources. They burnt everything to try and find a fight bot. Now Shalka inhibitor. Easy pickup for Splice and Trick. Rather, Xerse just burying in these Baron creeps on the top side of the map. Forcing some Jinx with a lot of range on that rapid fire game. They can't poke pretty easily. 42 seconds left in the Baron. I think that they might get all three towers. Kabi stepping forward, that's going to be at least one more. Shalka trying to hold on to something. Need to find a fight. Ignar, maybe with the perfect hook, can get a fight kicked off. But Northgarn is there to say no. This Tom Kent really dissuading any potential playmaking. Managed to pillar. Northgarn just gobbles up. Five times. He would right now coming in. If they overcommit under the Jinx, they haven't killed the Jinx. This is going to be a disaster. The Olaf rampaging through the back line. He would right stepping forward. Kabe untouched for now. Trying desperately to get the reset. If he kills Trick, this fight will turn in an instant. But it's too late already. Kabe gets one. Splice just going to play cleanup. Odawane has to run for the hills. Zuzachachi looks for a little bit of revenge here. Another inhibitor is going to fall. There's creeps in the base, and it's just going to be the game. Absolute dominance from Splice here in game two. Shalka did not even get a chance. Splice with a fantastic performance in the early game, and so much praise has to go to Humanoid. Some fantastic, much more oh. focused on playing around bots. Wow, and we're going to see the That's Camille a new one. walked in. You would imagine this must be Camille in the mid lane. Ragus Abadage will now know that he needs to stay on the top side of the lane, but in the meantime, the lantern is going to pull him back. Trick now in the midst of the entire team. This is exactly the fight that they wanted to start off. Northgarren walking away. He's not going to be able to get it. A beautiful flash forward from Trick to body. Abadage. They can try to go for a play here. Channeling Predator goes over the wall, wants to get something. It's gone. A duck can use the Grag Assault and get himself right out of that play, but forcing the alt early, gonna make sure the humanoid. Has you know, they, they have the bot push now. They have the firewood mid as well. So a very easy take, especially with Zerse on the top side. Is he looking for a gank? Oh, it looks like he is actually gonna try and make something happen onto Odo here. Only gonna get a single bounce. It's gonna be a body slam. Goes in, gets it easy. Flashes right into the GP. He's already had the Silas's number during the laning phase, so you can imagine that's only gonna get better as time progresses. And now they set up the guy. Goes in, Silas gonna try to make his way out here. He's not gonna get a chance to steal an ultimate. Trick goes in, walks forward, but the tank from the tower comes in. Hook shot his way out, little Spider-Man for North Scaren. Oh, Wamne now on the chase. North Scaren most likely set to fall here. Axe is picked up. No, goes golden. He's gonna. I think he's still dead. All right, they're gonna take him down in the end. He's hoping for a roll of out to safety. But meanwhile, we take a look at the, the main benefactor of that series of events. The mountain will go yeah, down, but as you said, Spice doing everything they can to slow the game down as much as possible. This will be another out of tower going in favor of Shalka, so they do extend the gun. Uh, what, what do you want from me, audience? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, die, oh, die. Here we go. Here we go. Moment of truth. The Gangplank Ultimate, stolen away. Abadage leaves forward. Still not exactly coming out on top of this trade, but that's a stolen GPL. They're big. trading. It's ult for ult. Look, Shalka's coming. They're coming so for the from mid lane. Odo Omni takes a huge amount of Good hook. hook. The play now comes in. Trick on the backside is exactly where they want to be. So they desperately trying to disengage. He's going to get one. He's going to try to make it out. It will not happen. Shalka cleaning it up in the two for one. So it was Splice who were trying to set up the dive in the top lane. But Shalka, they had push in mid. And after taking down that mid tower, were very quickly able to get the collapse out. Being a strong individual contributor to upset Odo Omni. Doing something similar. A stolen ult is going in the flat oh. for Northgarren, though, trying to lock him up. Kabe now on the retreat. Big snare comes through. Northgarren now knocked down. Actual ult more here. Shalka will not be denied. Feels like Shalka starting to wake up right now. They just grouped up mid, ran it down, caught Splice out of position. Put it into the mana Drake, as you were saying, Dracos. Hold on, man. Be careful, though. Bidgewater. Bidgewater. Can't just run him down. 
Mountain Drake as well, though. Has to go for the fight now. If he goes Mega, he's just instantly going to die. Now trying to finish him off. Yeah, bounce comes through. One more bullet. Shoot him. No, denied. Killing spree comes through. Oh, the one they barely on the edge. Now the fight kicks off. That's going to be the ultimate coming out from Humanoid. Trying desperately to get something done. Zerte looking for the disengage. Trick now taking down Kabe. Going forward. Uses the all, but the timing yes. is just sad. <laughs> Ranger Assassin Void. North oh, Garrett, though. Comes TP. He's in trouble. Caught out. TP now coming in. Oduwamne with the Meganar. He sees his hero moment. He leaps right back out to safety, though. Oh, Shotgun now collapsing. Humanoid can just pick a single member off. Mininar is here. Trick has to be careful. The ultimate comes out. Trick can't actually rock out of this one. But can he be pulled out? No. Huge damage now comes in. Buys a bit more time. The kill has gone down in the favor of Shotgun up here. Trick now running for his life. Will get taken out by the side of Kabe. Spice have access, first access to the pit. side lane with two items, but outside of that dreamy Meganar scenario. Um, isn't always going to be the most reliable uh, champion in a team. Use, but they might just be able to take it. They're going to be able to take it. Splice, do they fall off with the fight? If they get the reset, Camille's on the side side. There's a touch, he does so much damage. Oduwamne, they're all backing out now. The cast does manage to connect. Kabe moving in on the side. Ignore has been taken down. They're hunting for more. The TP coming in. Not sure why this is the moment. The Camille throws the TP in. Vizichachi now caught up. The Zerse goes in. Up six is going to be in trouble. The ultimate comes out. Tries to flash backwards. Up six is Kabe has taken him out. The Baron may have gone down in the favor of Shalka, but Splice are cleaning up the fight. Odawame, the only member to keep that buff. The immediate TP down. The Gangplank is TPing down as well. Three members of Splice in the mid lane. And Splice, there's only a few towers left. Hook next. Cutting through. 24 second death time. Remember, it's on the line. A splice win here. They go to Worlds. Pizza Chachi, 339 games. He has never been to Worlds, but he can do it right here. All we'll take is a win. For, oh, fight win. Oduwamne, though, the rage is stacking. It's a big Nari. Knocks him into the tower, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Hakami still keeping his eyes set on the tower. Splice moving in for a little bit more. Third in the regular season. Can they make it? Three seconds on upset, but the game might just end here. Upset will not be enough. Splice should just end if they still have the creeps. Upset, a hero play. It would take literally everything he has left. The Nexus falling lower and lower, and with an instant Splice do it. Splice qualify for Thank you very much, Fedius. It's my pleasure to be joined by Vizichachi. Complete dominance, 3-0, qualifying for Worlds. Uh, what did it take for you to get to this moment? Uh, I mean, we came into this series thinking even if it takes like uh, six hours or something, but we win it, then it's worth it anyways. And we get to go towards and that's, that's all that matters. I've been fighting for this for five years straight and this is finally the moment I got it. So it's really, really nice. I said it earlier on the broadcast, but 339 games. I mean, what a road. You've been so close so many times. I mean, you've been on second or third best teams in in the LEC for as long as you've been here and you're finally there now. Um, are you even thinking about tomorrow? Are you even worried about Fnatic or is it just all eyes on Worlds at this Actually, point Actually, I wasn't thinking about tomorrow yet, but uh, <laughs> now that you mentioned it, we still have a best of five to go. So yeah, we will have to focus on tomorrow's game, obviously, and that decides a lot if we go to planes or group stage. And uh, I think we'll have good chances tomorrow. And as much as I want to just continue celebrating this like fantastic moment that is you making it to Worlds, I do have to ask, what changed for you guys today? What was different? Because yesterday was, was five long, grueling games, and today, outside of game three, you just blew them out of the water. Yeah, I, I think the only thing that we were lacking is confidence, especially after the series against Rogue, where we got demolished 3-0. And we kind of regained it yesterday because we saw that we can compete with these teams and we can beat them. And coming into today's series, we were just full confidence, knowing that this is our series to take. Now, looking back at the regular season, you were the team contesting G2, contesting Fnatic. I mean, in second place for a large part of the season, you have to play Fnatic again tomorrow. Does that feel like a close match to you? I think it's safe from an outside perspective to call you the underdogs, but how do you feel about it? Uh, I feel like last time we faced them, it was our game to lose. And I think we won against them once as well during the summer split. And Fnatic is always the one that beats us in like best of fives, so we really want to take revenge on them this time. All right, well, I hope for your sake you get that revenge, get that second seed. A lot on the line tomorrow, but congrats again you. to you on making World Visit Chachi a huge moment as we send it over to PGL. Welcome everyone to the LEC Post Game Lobby. I'm Chachi, joined by Frost, Yamato, Cannon, and Gilius. Whoa, so much emotion. I mean, obviously happy for Chachi and for Splice. Uh, Chachi, who's been fighting for so, so long. And I thought, is it just never going to happen? Is the man cursed, Frosk? So super happy to see him get that. Yeah, and not just Chachi, but uh, his brother and arms there in Xerse. They have been so close for so long, very long careers. Uh, 
finally get to make their birth there. Then you have Humanoid, his first time going to a big international stage, as well as Norse Garen. So there's like a lot of question marks. It's yes, you know, you see Splice fans that they finally get to celebrate that these uh, names that have been around for so long get to have their moment. Kabe returning for a second time, but now also looking at the newcomers of the support and the mid lane matchup and seeing if Splice can keep them together on such a massive international stage. I don't think Norse Garen or Humanoid have even played in an arena because they didn't make it to Athens. Uh, depending on what leagues they played in before or what tournaments yeah, they played. Maybe, like maybe they were massive, you know. Uh, but <laughs> so I was going to say at the beginning of this day, we thought a Splice who played like they played yesterday does not deserve to go to Worlds, Yamato. Do they deserve it now after what you've seen? We saw uh, a much better display, for sure. I was saying yesterday, if you win the gauntlet, uh, then you get to go to Worlds, you deserve it. Simple. Today, they met uh, a much tougher opponent than Schalke. We had a high expectation of Schalke, but Splice delivered on many fronts. They started doing things in the early game. Zerka started playing the game. Mid-game started looking more crisp. They were actually active in the game. And I think activity is a good measurement for the teams that we have uh, in the teams in this league. And I think the more activity you have that is positive, the better it is. Uh, I love those Spice showcase today. Um, how'd the resident jungle expert find the matchup? <laughs> yeah, I think the drafts were much more crisp today from Splice. And Xerxes really, really stepped up. Like, he really outperformed Trick today. Like, no question about it. Champion uh, decision, like what he picks, like blind picks or counter picks, and just pathing as well. So, yeah, Xerxes is definitely the MVP today, and Splice is looking really strong. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you talk about, you know, right things to pick. And I know that Yamato, before this day, you had the dream comp for Splice. Seems to me that they got their hands on a lot of those things a bit too often. Really only challenged in this last game, and they still won. I think the big thing was Vichichachi on GP. Yes. Oh. Like he was soaking up pressure, pressure. They were trying to gank him. They were trying to do things. They couldn't really find the right counter to it, and he got to play it for three games. That's a lot of gangplank ultimates. That's a lot of pirate ships. That's something that maybe they should look at, maybe into coming into the World Championship, maybe even tomorrow. He's Yar. not going to be allowed to play it. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's like, how can you leave GP open three times? Like, there must be a click somewhere yeah. to pick it away or to ban it. And I feel like uh, Odo is a GP player too, no? Uh, well, I mean, I think everyone sure who is in their heart yeah. is a yeah. GP I'm, I'm player. I'm sure Odo can play it yeah. too, so surprising drafts today as well. Yeah, the fact that champions like Aatrox fall all the way through, no one even looks twice at them. And that was kind For of sure. really, yeah, exactly. That was the <laughs> yeah. undoing of uh, Splice when they entered playoffs, when they ran into Rogue, and it was they gave away Aatrox priority pick every single time. And not that Finn beat Chachi in lane or anything like that, because I think Chachi was winning the lanes, but was just having a higher impact on one of these picks. And I agree, kind of the, the celebration and like the Aww. good night dreams is right now, as you like, you see that moment, you're so happy for Splice. Uh, but the rude awakening tomorrow when they face Fnatic is ah. if you take GP, you will absolutely get punished. And you shouldn't get GP, and Aatrox is going to rise well, up much let's higher. Not, let's not go let's too say, fast I don't think they here. Give a damn. They're at Worlds. Yeah, they're <laughs> at Worlds, that's true. But I mean, you know, you never know which group you're going to end up in. So hopefully, maybe you are going to fight for that second seat. I'm sure yeah. they are. I just wanted to kind of button it up. Sorry to interrupt you for all right, fine. In terms of um, all the happiness we saw here and all the absolute elation from the side of Splice. And we were looking over to the Schalke side, upset in tears immediately. Of course, I mean, but w w what happened? How did they not step up to the occasion at all today, Gilius? Um, it's a, a BO5 is very different from a BO1. It's like it has a lot to do with emotions as well and how you handle a win or handle a loss. You can win a game and get overconfident and then instantly lose the next one. You can lose a game, get humbled and then win the next one. So it's about experience and I mean, Upset is still very young. I think the guy will be the best AD carry Europe has ever had eventually. Just needs some time and uh, yeah, today he couldn't do it. Yeah. I, th I think a big thing as well with, with Schalke was that everyone kind of expected them to win. Mm -hmm. The hype was there. Everyone talked about them as if uh, they are the clear favorite of this gauntlet because OG was such a kind of question mark. 
And I think that also puts an unnecessary pressure on you when you come from an underdog position. Maybe that was Spice's plan all along, you know, they're like, we have internet issues, we don't have internet, and then they come in as an underdog, they sweep in <laughs> through the carpet. They said they love the underdog position, though, and yeah. we've also theorized <laughs> that they do really well in the underdog position, but not well That's why they played not. like that yesterday. Well, yes, exactly, <laughs> it was all planned. But in the same, like, breath, uh, or if you go back to the regular split, like, Splice were contesting to take away the Athens spot with yep. Fnatic. So, like, there's there's two ways, because I agree with you. You look at the, the series yesterday, like, oh, Origin versus Splice. The only wi uh, winner yesterday was really Shaka. We're like, oh, this will be easy And pickings. they tweeted it, too. Exactly. But here's the thing. A, you get the warm-up time for Splice, which they always talk about confidence. That's the the, the word that we're going to say every single time when Splice are on stage. You hear it in the interviews. Chachi just said it. We just didn't have confidence. We had confidence today. And it's always going to be the thing. So, Splice... Uh, having that extra B05, I think is actually massive here. And then B, Splice have shown consistently that they were the better team over the regular split. Sure. So while I do agree with you that the perception felt like Schalke were the heavy favorites because of recency bias of what we saw Splice versus Origin, which is kind of what you're, you're working with, we knew that the ceiling from Splice was much higher. And thank goodness they actually got to show it today and uh, punch their ticket to Worlds. The big problem for Splice tomorrow is you just went to a five game series with OG. You sh you have shown your cards. Like, I would know how to draft against them, personally. <laughs> um, today, 3-0, you showed how you win. You also showed yesterday how you lose. So I'm expecting a very clear 3-0 tomorrow. The only thing I would say like, against that is, I don't disagree with you, but in the regular season, when they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fnatic as well, all the cards were on the table as well, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe straight up, right? With good picks for both sides. Mm -hmm. So I think what... The gist of it here is, is that they have a high ceiling. My question marks lay in if they can hit it consistently enough throughout a best of one stage in the group stage or possibly a play-in. Let's talk about that in a second. I'm first going to give the key up player of the game, um, series rather, shocks. that was three games. Kavi, 42% of the votes. What a poetic justice that it's Kavi again who gets it and he gets back to Worlds. I saw you giving him a hug. Yamato, are you, how happy are you for this guy? I was super happy for him. You know, I, I met him in the hallway and I was like, uh, dude, just make it quick. And he was okay. I was like, yeah, sure, man. And then when I hugged him in the crowd, he was like, I made it quick. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. If we look at the bracket, it means the Splice are ready for Worlds 2019, while Schalke end their season here. So now, let's talk about Splice at Worlds. And I don't want to condemn them to that third seed in planes, but let's theoretically say that they arrive in planes. Frosk, what are your initial thoughts as to how they could do there? To start? Uh, well, I haven't gotten a chance to really deep dive into the planes teams. I will say that I personally think it would only make Splice a stronger team. I do think that when teams get to go into plans, um, we saw this with G2 and Cloud9, who both went in through plans and then made massive runs to the semifinals. Um, last Worlds, it gives you time to figure out the meta, it gives you good scrim practice, uh, and it gives you time to experiment and find your footing, find your momentum. And I think for a team like Splice that has so many new members to the world stage, four out of their five players <laughs> brand new to uh, this level of competition, that that only actually bodes well for them if they do take third seat. Exceptional point. Uh, I think the big thing, the takeaway with Splice that I felt throughout the day and yesterday and uh, the general consensus about how they talk in interviews is confidence and comfort is a really big deal. <clears throat> I just have to add something in my throat, sorry. Water. So, so humanoid, uh, I'll grab some water later, it's too tricky. <laughs> humanoid on Kiana versus Fnatic, all of a sudden he was a monster. Yeah. Confidence and comfort. Akali today, confidence, comfort, GP, confidence, comfort. All of a sudden we see the kind of night and day difference of these players when they're playing something they really want to play, like Noshkinon on Tam. Oscar and Nautilus look rough in that game three, but doesn't matter. If they find those key picks, which I think they can find the time to explore in the play-ins, all of a sudden we might see peak splice. I also think uh, in terms of their coaching staff, that's then a clear goal. If you're going into planes, maybe even groups where you're playing several best of ones in one day, then that mental stability has to be in there because you can go on that roller coaster and it can all go downhill or it can all go uphill for Splice. So I think that's a clear task for them. But then, Gilius, uh, you said about yeah. tomorrow because we now theorize about planes, mm -hmm. but they could still get second seed. Why is it such a clear cut 3 0 for you? Um. For Fnatic. It's just the first, like Fnatic and G2 are on a different level, I think. This, it's just these teams have much more international experience than the other teams in the LEC. They have the, all the superstars. G2 literally 
has the five best players in Europe. And Fnatic is just, um, I think they losing to G2 twice is an uh, experience where you learn a lot. And What's so good about Fnatic? Fnatic, they have Reckless, Hillisung in a bot lane that's al already pretty unbalanced. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, Broxa, who is like, the meta is really good for him right now. And you have, I don't know, the whole team is good. I don't know. <laughs> Need to remember who the rest yeah. of the team is next to. No, yeah, Nemesis and Buipo, no? <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> I think like the sentiment is is that you keep hearing words like, you know, the five best players, uh, Reckless and Hilly, it's uneven. It's these names that grab out to you. And, and when you think about Splice, I mean, you have Kabe, and his name will come to everyone. But Xerse, it felt like, was having a, a great split, and a lot of people got behind him and were really singing his praises. But we constantly talk about that X factor, like who's it going to be for Splice when you stand up to titans like G2 and Fnatic, and it's that legendary, iconic, superstar, whatever adjective you want to throw onto it, that's what Splice are missing right now. And it doesn't mean that it's not capable, but it means that they now get an opportunity on an international stage where they could pull a Vitality. They could make themselves into superstars. If Xerse comes into a, a world, uh, worlds and then just like destroys kids, then he gets to become that Broxa, that Yankos. How but they haven't done it? it yet. How possible is it for Splice to pull a Vitality? And are we also, I want to use this word very carefully because by all means, I think Vitality did exceptional at Worlds but fell short, but diminished them to being that wild card factor. I think the nature of play style for one. Exactly. I think uh, I wanted to touch on the point about this particular matchup. I think uh, today was a massive coaching staff victory, mm. honestly. The preparation, three games, I think the draft was so successful for Splice and what they wanted to accomplish in the game, specifically against Schalke. And that's amazing considering they're in a gauntlet format, they had to face another team yesterday and they have to continue preparation overnight. That's crazy. And with that being said, coming into a best of five now against a Fnatic, they get to see all of this. I think that coaching draft power is no longer there. And then you have to look at how strong these teams are pound for pound. Fnatic, I think they just play much faster. I think they a lot of the champion pools, they kind of collide. We pull loves the gangplank too. He lo loves to get left on an island. We're going to have that pick getting contested yeah, a lot. He loves Kali as well with Humanoid. There's a lot of picks there that uh, collide with each other. So I think uh, we're going to have very interesting drafts where Fnatic will have an edge. And I think also player-wise, uh, Reckless and Hillisang are just too lethal. And I, I think when when teams look at Splice, they should like try to copy some things. Like I looked at the backstage camera. It looks like a restaurant out there. Oh, the snacks look unreal. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like a, uh, there's a meal. You know, you can eat this. You can eat this. There's like, I don't know, man. They invited everyone. <laughs> Twenty people. Someone's on like the massage. Someone's got like the slippers. And that is not, I need to tell you. That is absolutely not balanced. If there's 20 brains there, then <laughs> you will. I mean, the, I mean, the, the person <laughs> preparing the snacks OP. probably isn't helping in the draft, though. You don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe you like could have made those snacks. Yeah. Like, that, that's I, a problem. I can make your hors d'oeuvres and I can also predict the draft. Uh, and then you. you look at Schalke and they're still in Falco. <laughs> Why is he laughing? Gilead. It's just true. Okay. Like, no, um, like, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, I don't want to like, like, I feel like it's like, He's saying it's a, it's a one-man army versus the machine yeah, that is okay, Splice. I thought you were throwing shade I'm, at Dylan I'm, Falco, but you were I'm saying it's one. I'm not throwing shade at anyone. Yeah, okay. I'm saying, saying they have like snacks everywhere. They're taking care of their <laughs> players. And I'm not saying other teams are not. Yeah, exactly. No, 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 I totally understand. And I am here. also saying that a lot of people in the coaching staff it's a good thing. But too many cooks in the kitchen is sometimes also not. No, but you can actually see the fingerprints of, of what he's talking I mean, about, which sure. is... You, have, you can disagree with everything I say. No, no, no I'm with I don't you disagree. 100%. I'm sorry, just... it's my bad. I'm laughing, it's no, my bad. I don't <laughs> disagree at all, Gilius. I just wanted to make sure that we also gave... I mean, Schalke lost, mm -hmm. but we've seen throughout the year that they have put a lot into their coaching staff, a lot into everything surrounding the team. So it's... I just wanted yeah. to be careful that we weren't completely... I worked with Schalke disregarding them. in yeah. Athens mm -hmm. at the booth. I respect everyone right, on Schalke, okay. and I'm really good friends with everyone. Yeah, just uh, you know, just make sure we're all clear. No, I was just, uh, I was gonna say, I think uh, he brings up a great point, and that you can see the fingerprint of uh, Splice's support structure that they've built behind them. The fact that you can plug in completely different players virtually every single year, and you pop out, and it's a 37-minute game every single time. Which, yeah. thankfully, not for this series. This is like probably the <laughs> fastest games from Splice I've ever seen. So uh, I just want to echo the compliments to Splice's uh, staff because 